we welcome you back to the Academy Theatre and the Bake Off. So good to see all of you. Lately I've been seeing in special effects movies there's been more of an attempt to bring in real practical aspects to it and not rely completely on CG for let's say the particle systems. I was very taken by the use of helicopters and the dust. How important was it to have some real world placeholders for that sequence in your mind? Uh, it was pivotal. The D's brief to me from the very beginning was that like he wanted things to be as photoreal and as grounded as possible. He never wanted the audience at any particular point to be actually taken out from uh, the story. Now, obviously, we're building these space worlds and flying ships and stuff, so it was very much an approach of like trying to keep virtual cameras as if you were able to shoot them. So basically, you never got too close to an ornithopter because like, basically you would crash. You know, we shot helicopter to helicopter. We did takeoff and some landings with practical helicopters to then change into ornithopters. We also built two 12-ton ornithopters, which we tried to use as much as possible in camera and then add CG rings. Even though there are parts where are all CG, they're always bookend with a real shot. So the idea was to like, try and keep everything as grounded and as photo real as possible. Almost every shot has some photo real visual effects, some sort of graphical element, and sometimes some transitions between the two. It's an amalgamation, so we literally watch thousands and thousands of hours of video game play and all of us have our people that we know that play endless hours of video games so we just collected all the information and you know tried to pay homage to it put as many easter eggs in there as we could so that's why some of it's photoreal and some of it's just playful so half of our company are technical advisors when it comes to yeah. video game play so <laughs> you had some good reference know, we are seeing the convergence of visual effects and gaming for sure I was taken by how well the integration between visual effects and practical in that sequence. How did you work together to make that work? Obviously the first thing was to get the Aston Martins. The choice was easy because you know, that's Bond's car. What wasn't so easy is going to Aston Martin and uh, asking for ten of them. Buying them wasn't an option. Renting them wasn't an option. So um, we quickly settled on we would have two real cars and eight that would be built by Aston and in conjunction with us. All the car stuff was a really good collaboration between stunts, VFX and SFX. And I think we looked at every shot, shot by shot, to see how far each department could go. And so broadly breaking it down, it was, you know, the, the wider shots was Mark Higgins driving the car, us replacing bodies or heads where required, getting closer, we're painting pods out, but we've got the real talent inside the cars. And then process work, obviously, after that to get even closer. And so it was kind of horses for courses, yeah. said you had to sort of create all those backgrounds <laughs> and you, didn't, you couldn't go on location to shoot that. Can you tell us a little bit more about that because they're so beautiful and so effective that you just don't know that uh, you didn't have at least a good foundation to work from for your environment bef before you added all the amazing visual effects work. There were many backgrounds or worlds out there that we were hoping to go to. And then COVID hit, Digital Domain then took incredible photography that they had just of uh, that area and then rebuilt that whole world. Macau, we were supposed to be shooting an entire sequence there, so we ended up building that city from scratch. It's amazing what you can get from uh, Google Maps these days. The world of Talo, Su Chan and the art department built an amazing set uh, just outside of Sydney, Australia. It had about a dozen houses, but the entire world around it is obviously all CG. There's an opening shot you see in the reel when you fly up over the bamboo and reveal Talo for the first time. And I think it's, it was a beautiful work by, by Rising Sun. It was, it was great. 
entire world's about to forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Uh, can't some people still know? Well, that's not how the spell works, and it's very difficult and dangerous to change it mid-cast. I was quite taken with how much attention yeah, is going on. Interactive lighting. The portal opens, it's reflecting on the actors, it's on the surfaces, just some of the best I've seen of that. What's interesting about the interactive lighting in general, like with, uh, first with the, when the spell goes wrong sequence, and we didn't really know what it was until quite late in the process. Gaffer's asking me, so how do you want to light this? <laughs> how do you want to do this interactive lighting? And I'm like, well, just kind of keep it neutral, not too high frequency, kind of just keep it general, something that we can manipulate if need be. We also, for that sequence, built a digital version of it so that we could light it uh, interactively as well. And of course, with the end battle in the Powerline Corridor sequence, a lot of that's just a CG environment. Um, but with uh, Jamie Foxx, he was lit also interactively. But we were able to tie that in, generally speaking, with what we had. So yeah, great, great stuff. Thank you. Thank you, my fellow governors, as well as the entire Academy team. Your tireless dedication and effort made this event possible tonight. There's a lot of people working behind the scenes to make this happen, so thank you very much.